Should you have come across this video on a whim, then we're actually in the middle of talking about Lowland whiskies. Now, that doesn't mean you need to click off and then go from the start. It's just to kind of let you know that, you know, I'm all about episodic content these days. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, but today, we're going to be carrying on with... Which one did I decide on today? The King's Inch. There we go. Uh, and because I am sort of the trailer park trash of the YouTube whiskey reviewing community, you, you absolutely can expect jokes about inches at some point. Uh, but first, if you are interested in weekly whiskey content, uh, then do subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon because it does magical things. Honest. Um, not JK Rowling magical thing because that turns out to be transphobia. That's good magical things. Starting strong. Anyway, um, cool. So, we've got a, well, I want to say a Glasgow whiskey, uh, and there's reasons why I say that, that are not at all clear <laughs> to anyone, really. Um, this is one of those whiskies where, let's we'll start with this one, King's Inch. Let's start there. Let's start with the name. Um, it's, hang on, I wrote some facts down about this, and I thought I'd keep it off screen to, like, pretend that I know things off the top of my head, but I don't, so I've written it in purple on pink writing, because I'm all about Brazilian money or something. Um, there's probably about three of you will get that joke. Uh, so, the name derives from one of two possible sources, uh, or it's possibly a combination of both. Now, according to the official website, <clears throat> it's three fat barley corns laid end-to-end, -end, is apparently a unit of measurement, I can only assume it's an imperial measure, which are back in the news recently. Uh, for anyone who's excited about imperial measurements, by the way, don't be. They're bullshit. <laughs> they're, it, they're, they're just made up. Um, they, I mean, most things are made up, but like you know how like metric system is like a hundred of something is a rounded up. For, it's like you know, there's a a pound is a hundred pennies, and then that's it. We don't really have anything past that, so that's maybe not a good example. Uh, like centimeters, millimeter, you know, like that kind of a thing. Uh, it's just. There's no rhyme or reason between different different units of measurements in imperial systems. Um, we still use some of them, like pints and feet and inches and stuff. But anyway, besides the point, besides the point, I'm getting off the tra tangent already. But uh, long and short, if, if that ends up happening, oh lordy. <laughs> oh lordy, we're in for a mess. Um, uh, but also, it's an island in the Clyde, which is called the King's Inch. So that's that's fun. Uh, inch is um, means island basically. Um, yeah. So that's that's that. Now then, who makes it? We don't know. <laughs> the recipe itself comes from a man called Jim Swan, uh, and I'm sure I don't need to tell too many people who that is. Um, if I do, then do you know I'm not going to go into it. Um, find out your own time. But long story short, big deal. Um, he came up with the recipe, and then it was passed on to who was at the time the head distiller of um, Glasgow Distillery, and his name escapes me for some reason, Dr. Something or Other. That's embarrassing, isn't it? I didn't make a note of that one. Dr. Somebody who, honestly, I've never heard of before, if I'm completely honest with you. Uh, so that's, that's cool. Yeah. I could pretend I know what I'm doing, really, couldn't I? But I didn't. So, anyway, it's fine. Um, so yeah, he worked at Glasgow Distillery at the time, so... Maybe it's made at Glasgow Distillery? We don't know. They won't tell us. Some... Some whiskies are easier to guess than others, like, um... Just pluck a, a something out of the air. Uh, you know Black Bottle, the blended whiskey? Um, they're owned by the guys that make Lechik, Tobemori, that kind of stuff. Uh, they released a couple of experimental... Um black bottle releases, and one of them was a heavily smoked one, and whilst we don't know for certain that it's Lechik that contributes to that, it would make sense, wouldn't it? So th there's an example of, you know, one where we can take an educated guess. This, we could probably take an educated guess, but honestly, it's anyone's. Um, King's Age, also, this is the first foray of the guys behind Glaswegian. You know, like the big white square bottles? Um, that's... That's them. Um, I have yet to try their wares. I'm told it's lovely. Although I don't know if people like the gin or they just like the bottle and because how we work as humans, a lot of people like associate a pretty, like here's a good example. Um, oh, mermaid gin. Back in the days when I did things other than whiskies. Um, only reason I stopped really was because you guys stopped watching it. So 
if I'm completely bluntly honest, uh, the only reason I still do ROMs is because some of you have an interest in that. Uh, gin's complete disaster, so I was like, well, I might as well uh, husband my time to better things. But if you do want to watch that review, actually, I'll leave a card up. Um, I did that with the humble bartender, uh, a man who has uh, since... Well, he hasn't retired, he's not that old, but he's, he's gone into other things. I think he's doing, like, vegan cookery now or something like that. Anyway, charming, charming man. Um... I was going to put water in this, I haven't even drank it yet. Let's do the whiskey. Let's do that. Let's... let's... I am mental. Ooh, ooh, it's a very fruity nose. Um, apricots, figs. Ooh, it's a little walnutty. It's, um... Sort of classical space eye characteristics almost, kind of like pears, apples. A little bit of, uh... A little bit of a citrusy component, kind of like a, a lemon zest sort of a sort of a vibe I'm getting from this. Really fruit forward, uh, a little sweet. As like you know, again, people have pulled me up in the past. It's like, how can something smell sweet? You know, when you like walk into a bakery and you're like, hmm, that's what I mean when it's like, it's like it's the associated smell that you get off of it reminds you of a sweet thing. In this case, it's kind of like maybe that's a muffin or something. But yeah, I'm expecting, I'm expecting sweet things from this. But and for those of you who are like, oh, how, uh, how, how can a, a whiskey taste savoury? Someone's clearly never had a Kalila before, or a Ben Nevis. Come to think of it, it's forty-six percent. I believe natural colour and non-chill filtered, and it's delightful. Oh, that's really good. Oh, yes, it's um. Oh, it's really vanilla custard. Uh, it it is sweet. It does have a, a sweet, rounded, gentle going sort of a flavour. Uh, it's a little lemony in the middle. It's got a herbal note to it. The fruitiness that comes through on the nose. I'm not necessarily getting it on the first sip, but we'll give it another go. See if I can kind of. There's a reminiscence of like plums and stuff like that. It's. It, autumnal stone fruits kind of a flavour. But predominantly it's... Do you know what, actually, I'm going to double down there's a little bit of apricot in there as well. Yeah. Um, quite biscuity. Like digestive biscuits, rich teas, that kind of like plain, simple dunking biscuit, if you want to go down that road. Although anyone who's dunked a rich tea for too long, I feel your pain, I really do. Um, custard, a little bit of orange zest, slightly caramelly. Uh, I always feel dumb whenever I say it's oaky or it's barley forward. Um, there is there is a barley presence to this. Um, of course there is. It's one of the ingredients. Uh, it's like saying, oh, this gin tastes juniper You know, I, I realise it's kind of a dumb thing to say. But not all whiskies have the flavour of what they're initially made from. Am I making sense? I don't know if I'm making sense. I'm going to stick some water in this now. Because uh, it is 46%. Which is pleasing. But let's see how it opens up a little bit. No, no, obviously it's not not cast strength, because at the end of the day, this is pivoting itself as a pretty entry-level whiskey. Now the marketing behind this has been I think it's fair to say fairly aggressive, to be honest. These guys have been hitting the ground hard with this as an asset, as a, a product to push. And so far, to be honest, I'm here for it, because actually, I was a little nervous about this whiskey, if I'm completely honest, because I saw it was a no-age statement, we don't know where it's made, it felt to me like a portfolio push in a bottle. But so far, the liquid itself is working for me. Oh, it's really doubling down on the vanilla when you add water. It's... it's... I don't want to use the comparison, because then people are going to be like, it can't be that good, but it is kind of reminding me of Bladnock 10. I know, I know, put the fucking pitchforks down, it is, I'm sorry. There's a vanilla, custard cream, it's still quite fruity, there's... Oh, I had a tasting note and then I started talking and forgot it, that's... It's a little, it's a little eucalyptus, like peppermint, not eucalyptus, peppermint. I'm getting lost to myself now. I have gone to the point where I know when I nose a whiskey 
whether to expect that I'm going to enjoy it. Now, and I've still been surprised, you know, and I don't, you know, I've, I've nosed whiskies where I'm like, mm, I don't know about that one, and I've still loved it. This is one of those nosings where I'm like, I'm going to dig this. Mmm. Oh, and dig it, I do. Oh, I might have to get a bottle of this. <laughs> um, vanilla, there's a, there is a menthol note to it. Again, it's kind of similar to the, sort of the mint aspect that you get from, like, a... Uh, a Finette Branca. That's a really hipster, wanky thing to say. But a uh, Finette Branca is pre predominantly quite a, a bitter. Uh, flavour, but you do get plenty of kind of like a, a mint backbone to it. This has a similar mint backbone without actually having mint in it, obviously. It's bright, it's very citrusy actually. I'm getting a lot of kind of like orange zest about this now. It's you know, oranges are just a happy fruit, and I'm sorry if you're a person that doesn't like oranges. I get it, you know? Fruit isn't for everyone. Like the BNP, for example. They're, they're no longer on the scene, but that was... <sighs> if I'd gone with a still existing political party, that would have been a pretty funny gay joke. But as it is, it was crap. So, slightly herbal. There's actually more of a fruitiness on the second sip once I've added water. There is a lemoniness to it. There is a little bit of apple and pear. Oranges are coming through as well. There's plums. It's There's quite a lot going on. It's a fruit bowl almost. And you do still have that wonderful, rich, sort of mouth-coating vanilla presence that's kind of going all the way through. And I would imagine that's from the bourbon casks that they're using. Um, I don't have information on the makeup of this. Um, I believe I'm right in saying that it is a combination of bourbon and sherry casks, but... That's more that I've gotten from sort of peripheral information that I've heard of it uh, in conversation and stuff like that. It's not something I've researched, so I don't want to present that as fact, just in case. Because I've had plenty of conversations with people in the past where they've been telling me about a whiskey, and I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in my head I'm going, you're talking about something completely different, but I'm not going to interrupt you because that's rude. Um, and I've done it myself in the past as well, so, you know. Yeah. The finish on this doesn't linger. Um, it's very much kind of like a once it's done, it's done. It's it, it's more of a one night stand whiskey than a three year relationship kind of a guy, which I mean, you know, works. It's fine, um, but it is actually a very pleasant whiskey. I've got to say, um, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's young, obviously, um, but as I've mentioned previously, we're kind of getting we're starting to get tastes for for younger whiskies because there's a there's a fair few of them out there now. Uh, and so far, we seem to be, as a community certainly, uh, we seem to be enjoying our younger whiskies. Which does bring up the point about sort of no age statements. By law, they have to be the same age as a lot of these. Now then, a lot of us are saying that these are great, but no age statements, oh, you mustn't go near those. I wonder where that snobbery came from. Is it snobbery? I mean, I recently got called a snob for saying that Kraken isn't too good when you sip it neat, so I mean, apparently I'm the wrong person to ask, but... <sighs> thinking about that for days. Haven't slept. Haven't slept. Anyway, um, do you want to insult me? Leave a comment down below. Uh, thumb this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, because I do this sort of stuff where I sit in my living room alone and drink to a camera. Do join me next time, where I'll be drinking something else on my own. <laughs>